What is up? So how do you use laser scopes as AI? Laser scopes can be used as easy AI. So let's say we have a long range attack that we want the enemy to sense to be able to pull off long range attacks. And we have a close range attack right here. And that's if the player is close enough to the enemy. So this is his AI. And you can make as many laser scope attacks as you want. The important thing to remember is that whenever one laser scope goes off, so let's say the long range attack goes off, we need a cooldown system. We can use cooldown systems with a timer. So whenever it detects the player within that arrow, pointing at the player tag that we put inside of the microchip and then raise that dot up to there, then it sends off a signal to the timer to start the timer. Right now we have the current count inside of the A of a calculator greater than, if it's greater than 0.1, which would be 0.10, a result signal is sent to a keyframe that is on keep changes to keep this off. Whenever this is going, it's gonna keep on going and on finish timer, it's going to go to another keyframe that turns this back on also on keep changes. But then finish timer is also going to reset this, making it to where this will be powered off for good, powered off for good until the next activation of our fireball attack. Right here we have our animation and our fireball. And it's as simple as that. Right here we have our laser scope for our, our, our punch. While these animations are happening, you can also put a keyframe in here that deactivates the laser scopes. You can do that for this one also. In fact, I recommend doing that. You'll also wanna make a keyframe that you record with that turns off these two things. So right here, we also have our tags. So the laser scope can detect tags as well as that player tag. What I recommend doing is putting this on friend or whatever you're gonna name your player and then have your player have, this, have the same label. I recommend doing that. And if your player isn't collidable or isn't visible, make sure these settings are on also. You can mess around with everything else. Now you may have to tweak this system a little bit. I also deleted the follower tag in the enemy just to test it out. You'll want to keep it in yours. And I also have the enemy on unpossessable. So let's test this out. Let's see if, uh, if this will work. You want to make sure you put both timelines on once once. You might have to speed it up so that way the animation isn't slow. And if you need to speed it up even more than what the animation uh, speed ups provide, you can make the timelines closer to the beginning. The dots are fade-ins. It makes a single uh, keyframe animation fade in, sort of like this. And if you need it to fade out good, all you have to do is put a keyframe in there with no data. Set this to linear. You might want to set the other one to linear also. And again, you can have more than one laser scope. Let's say your enemy has low health and now he needs to use stronger attacks. We can put all this data inside of one microchip, right? So this is the first set of attacks. This is the second set of attacks that he uses whenever he has uh, low health. We'll put the first set in here. And then, and you can use variables as health too. This will work the same way. Pull out a calculator. If his health, current health, is less than whatever you want it to be less than, let's say 40 or something, it pulls out a keyframe, or you pull out a keyframe, it turns off the first set of attacks, 
and turns on the next set of attacks. Make sure it's on keep changes. Put it in the result or the power. This is also how you can make bosses. It's pretty easy. You can also use trigger zones or laser scopes. And this is our first set of attacks right here. So let's go ahead and press play and see if this is working. There's our punch. There's our fireball. The reason the fireball is shooting up like that is because we moved everything into here. And that sort of moved where the fireball emits from. So what you want to do is when you're doing this, make sure you put everything in the microchip first so that way you don't get those errors. And all you have to do is that. You might want to put this on emit with wires if you need this to be able to be detected and stuff to hurt your player. These are my settings right here. You can also try putting it on once. I might have to mess around with it. It might not shoot out straight. There we go. There's our punch. There's our punch. Now we just gotta add some knockback. What you can do for knockback is uh, pretty simple. So you don't have to do it like this. I'm just doing it like this because, you know, just because it's the fastest way that I've thought of to do it just now. We're gonna do some damage. So this is what he does whenever he gets hurt. the result in there pull out a mover make it relative make it to where he goes backwards so put the arrow going behind him put it as strong as you need it to be I recommend putting up the dampening let's test it out by uh, pressing play okay And then what you want to do, pull out a trigger zone. I usually don't use impact sensors. You can use impact sensors also. And check out my hitbox tutorial if you need to see why I don't use them. Then what we are going to do is go to our fireball first. Take it out of the emitter. Put this on this, place that to that, get out of scope mode so we can click it. We may have to click it a few times because there could be a few things in there. Instead of that, press play real quick. Let me test it out real quick. All right, what we're going to do is try, well, actually wait, yeah, we're going to try the label method. So let me press pause real quick. Move the bubble. Change this to faux. Make it to where it detects only faux. It's really hard, or at least it can be really hard to get these things to detect paintings. 
for whatever reason. That's why that's why it's so difficult. I have no idea why. We're going to do it a little bit different. Instead of me showing you how it would work with the painting, I'm going to just show you how it would work with the punch. So what you would want to do, scope in, click the parts of the hand that you want. And traditionally what I do is leave this powered off, then while the punch is happening, We'll put this in the A and the B. So I think this is the punch. While the punch is happening, it turns on the trigger zone. So let's test it out. So as you can see, it works. You can like downsize the trigger zone as much as you want. I also have it turning towards the player tag within the puppets um, menu settings. And usually what I do whenever something like that happens to where it's hard for me to get an object to be detected by something, I will actually open this up and group a tag with the painting. Not a tag. Well, actually, yeah, well, yeah it would probably be better to just group a tag with it. Just name it H. Probably just be better group of tag. I was gonna do it another way. And then we'll have it emit with wires. And this tag should emit with it. And just for this, we'll change it back. We'll change this to tags, name it H. So as you can see, this is blinking. So let's test our fireball. You may have to put a couple of those in there or upsize the dot. We'll make this bigger just to see if it works. As you can see, it can get difficult with paintings. I recommend like, there's, oh my gosh. Maybe I can just choose a dream verse element. Will that work? Is it because it's not on? I don't know guys, I really don't know. But if you can get the paintings to quiet, I mean, just put a trigger zone, like um, link it together with a trigger zone. This was the way that I was gonna do it before. What I would do is I would link a trigger zone 
with this object. Group it together. Have this trigger zone since the player. Close out of this one. Group them together. Emit it from there. We make it to where this uh, sends off a detection to hurt. Put this in the A and the B and make sure this is all uh, connected to the punches. it together, pull out your emitter, have it emit, and it should work. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So that's how you get paintings to work with it. It can be a little bit more tricky, but you know. So as you can see, this can get really, really fun. Um, and I hope this helps you guys out, laser scopes and and um and this extra tidbit to get you to hurt with paintings. So how to make paintings collidable in laser scope AI. Really easy. And then you can add a follower to it to where it follows the player, you know. Or keep the follower that it has and then, you know, just make it follow in the puppet settings in here. Right about here and just make this uh your player tag that's in here but again if you got if his if the main enemy's hp is low enough this turns on to activates the first set of attacks and turns on a second uh microchip using the same the same system that we have here except stronger attacks that's um that's all AI really is in dreams. It's not too difficult. It's um, it is. It, it's amazing. I hope this helps you guys out. Sorry this got long, but it was very informal. So I'm gonna keep it. Peace out.